Hi guys, thanks for joining me. I am just throwing a video together today. I haven't filmed in such a long time. I've been tagged in so many videos, so I want to apologise to everyone that's been tagging me in various videos. I've not had a chance to get around to anything, um, but I always appreciate being tagged, so I am very grateful. But today I just fancied sitting down and talking about everything I've been enjoying wearing lately. I didn't do a spring roundup because, to be honest, all the fragrances I've been kind of reaching for are so random that it, was, it would have been the weirdest video and it wouldn't have made any sense. It was not typical floral, it was not typical green. I just pick anything and everything out of my collection that makes me feel good. Mostly sweet fragrances that just wear what makes you feel good, what makes you feel happy. So I figured, sod it. There might be a few naughty new ones popping in here and there. Um, let's start with some samples because these are actually ones that are on my wish list and I am really enjoying these fragrances. So let's start with one from um, Le Orchestra Parfums. This is called Bouquet Encore. Now I know someone who is in love with this fragrance and they recently got this for their birthday. Now I really enjoyed sampling the entire house from Le Orchestra and the two most recent ones were Bouquet Encore and I think it's, is it Electro Liminard? I've not tried that one yet. Bouquet Encore is predominantly a tuberose fragrance. Tuberose is not my favourite note and flower. For whatever reason, it just works so beautifully in this in this fragrance. I've been testing this sample out since this was launched, so I've had it for a little while. I think it was sort of, sort of like summer last year, if I remember rightly. Um, I've never disliked it, and I've but I've never thought I would pick up a bottle of this because. Although I like it, I don't know if I'd wear a tuberose heavy fragrance. But over time, I keep going back to it and I keep reaching for it and I keep thinking, mm, is it me? And I've eventually realised that, you know what, I really enjoy this. I just do. It's a sweet tuberose. It's not a heavy, bubblegummy hairspray. One that I normally associate with hairspray. I've actually got it on. It's quite sweet. It's definitely tuberose focused. I think there's a lovely vanilla in here. It's a sweet vanilla tuberose. If I could colour this fragrance, I would colour it the colour of that lilac. Because it's so, it does, it smells like, like the colour of lilac, but sweeter and creamier and so beautiful um, and clean and just lovely. I just love it, I really do. So this is Bokeh Encore and this is one that is on my wish list and I'm hoping to pick up a bottle soon. So next is from Fulton Manley, and this is Charlatan. Um, now, I've been crushing so hard on this fragrance. So, so hard, I'm a bit obsessed with it. Um, this is my third sample bottle that I've actually bought now. This fragrance I never thought I'd ever gonna, I was ever gonna want. It's very heavy, jasmine, indolic, um, dirty, animalic, not my sort of thing at all. Over time, I've learned to really appreciate it. It's been a, a slow, slow love, because it's so artisan, it's so beautiful. There is, I believe there's a lot of chocolate in this. There's a pear, a strong pear note in here. Rose, it gets compared to Noir de Noir from Tom Ford. I don't think it's anything like Noir de Noir, personally. Noir de Noir is, is dark and earthy and a bit musky. This isn't any of that. This is actually brighter, bright animalic. And what I find really addictive in here is the pear. The pear smells like it's like cider, pear cider. Like it's gone, it's fermented into a cider sort of a scent. And you've got this beautiful chocolate in there as well. It's so rich. The rose is it's not that identifiable, not to me. But there is a, I guess a red hue, a plump red hue beneath everything, which must be this rose. Um, I don't want to say pissy, but well, I've said pissy, so I've got to stick with it now. First time I smelled this, I thought of cat's pee because I just didn't, I wasn't ready for whatever this was. It really isn't cat's pee. That was just my um, unevolved perfume brain. This is more like pear cider. That that fermented sharpness, but sweetness you get if a pear is fermented down and turned into cider, with a, with all these other things going on. It's very rich. It's ever so beautiful bit dirty, um, it gives it that name Charlatan, it really doesn't, it, I think it's been named perfectly. This is full bottle worthy because I'm, I'm enjoying it enough that I'm now my third, third sample. So the bottles are absolutely stunning. 
Um, and actually my next fragrance is from the same line, so we, we can show you that, but you've probably seen it before because I talk about it quite, quite a lot. So obviously Confessions of a Garden Gnome is of course a Fort and Manly, and these bottles are just absolutely stunning, slightly medieval, apothecary looking. Charlatan is, has like um, a jester face on it, and it's just, oh, it's just absolutely stunning. This was the first one I fell in love with from Fort and Manley. This is, um, I always forget all the notes in here. I don't know how I do it. Okay, so what I get from this mostly is ambergris. Beautiful, beautiful ambergris. But there's a much more dominant um, surface of lily and lily of the valley. That's the white florals in here, but they're not indolic. They're mellowed down with, with quite a tobacco-y nuance. I believe there's cedar and some other notes of wood creating quite a powdery, it's quite a powdery, woody, tobacco-y scent with this beautiful lily and lily of the valley and ambergris and it's just it's so beautiful it's so artisan even though i do cover this fragrance because it's got such I've got such an emotional attachment to it it's so special i have been reaching for it nonetheless um over this last month because like i say i'm reaching for things that make me feel happy that i can connect to and that really lift the mood make the day better and this is definitely one that will do that for me so that's confessions of a garden gnome so staying in the kind of green territory because this actually is classed as a green fragrance although i wouldn't i wouldn't class it as that it's too soft it's mystical it's more like a like i've said before it's more like a, a garden after the rain there's like a damp dewy mossy sensation in there sensation feeling it is classed as a green we'll stick with green and the next two i would say were more classically a spring sort of fragrance let's start with angela's pear now, this is actually my favourite from the house of Nikolai. Even though I didn't enjoy it when I first ever smelled it, it's, it grew on me and it grew on me. And now I just, I love it because it gives something I don't get from anything else. It gives this um, green, crisp, but dry pear, which is such a lovely thing to smell at the start of spring. It's got like a sheepra, sheepra, sheepra um, quality to it. It's very crisp. It's mossy, but it has this lovely pear that's not too, it's not sweet really at all. It's dry, but it's refreshing in a, in, a, in a crisp way, if you know what I mean. A conference pear has quite a dry, earthy skin on it. But when you bite into it, although it's, um, there is some sweetness, but it's not the sweetest pear in the world. It can be quite kind of, you know, hard fleshy. That's what it reminds me of, this fragrance. And it's got a lovely bite to it. Um, yeah, it's fresh as well. It has got a lovely freshness to it, but that lovely dry, crisp bite of pear and moss is what I really love in this fragrance. That is Angelie's pear. The next in the green territory, which I do mention an awful lot, but I love I love this little fragrance. This is Fawn, and it was created by Thomas O'Brien from the channel here, Ouch 110. I love this creation that he's come up with and I really hope he, he continues making fragrance because this is absolutely stunning and it's complex. It's aromatic, it's herbaceous, it's slightly animalic, it has some beautiful white florals of jasmine and lotus. Say so it reminds me of being outdoors in a meadow, dry leaves and things blowing around you. It's just so outdoorsy and gorgeous. And I've never said it before, but I always think it and then forget to say it, but it, it really reminds me of Elephant from Zoologist. But if those who have smelled Elephant, if you can imagine a much prettier version, because Elephant is very, it's much denser and earthier. Um, this has got the florals making it slightly prettier, but it's still got that lovely outdoorsy, you know, green grassy, aromatic, feel to it a little bit soapy just love how outdoorsy and fresh and clean it is while still being earthy and green so yeah that is another beautiful fragrance that i wore i've been wearing through spring and that is fawn so next is my ride or die this is black rain by renia um the fragrance of my soul <laughs> this is the one that never fails me it's just me in a bottle um, it starts out really sharp really moody um very strong leather and it really softens out and becomes this beautiful rose and violet it remains dark all the way through it remains a dark i think of it as my dark violet my black violet um, you've got chamomile in here you've got this beautiful ambergris in the base it's a very sharp piercingly astringent opening but it's also so smooth as well and you've just got these beautiful florals just coming through from the mid 
um, and that lovely salty ambergris at the base. I absolutely love this fragrance. It's absolute perfection to me. It's a masterpiece. I'm starting to cover this a bit more because um, I'm scared to use, use it up. It's too special. This is actually now a discontinued fragrance. And it's still available and I highly recommend checking it out. There are samples available on the Renier website. And I really recommend checking this one out because once it's gone, I believe that it's gone. So another one I've been really, really enjoying through spring. And this actually is much more of a spring appropriate sort of typical spring scent. This is Cha Cha San by MDCI. I nearly sold this fragrance around Christmas time. I nearly sold it because I just figured it, it just wasn't anything I didn't already have. Um, a pink style floral that's sort of fairly sweet and it had an edge to it that I wasn't completely sure about. I didn't enjoy it as much as I would thought I would through the seasons so I nearly sold it and it didn't sell so I, I hung on to it and thought okay I'll give it another go and I'm so so glad that I did because this is a spring fragrance through and through. Once I've ex once I experienced it through spring, this spring just gone, I've realised just how incredibly beautiful it is. It just wakes up in the spring. Something about the quality of the air, the florals, the, the greenness in the air, the different temperatures, this really comes alive. This is a um a cherry blossom, a pear lychee rose fragrance. But there's definitely sweetness in here. I think the cherry blossom is and the pear is the most dominant um notes in this. It's got a sparkling champagne quality for whatever reason and the cherry blossom doesn't it's not always um, a win on with me it depends on what it's been paired with but in here i think the lychee is giving it a lot of sweetness and it just works and it just seems to come alive in the spring it's juicy it's bright it reminds me of of like an elderflower wine or a, a fruit floral wine somehow i don't know what it is that's what i think of it's very pretty it's very clean it's pink it definitely smells pink um but with this sort of juicy fresh quality so i'm super relieved that this one didn't actually sell and i still have it in my collection so that is cha cha san by mdci next up we've got an absolute stunner from maison francis cope jan i'm seeing it get a lot of love i mean it always got a lot of love but it's it's sort of growing and and becoming much more appreciated this is gentle fluidity gold and we're seeing more and more people talk about this one and i and I, I think it is a grower it's not one that you instantly smell and you think wow this is just you know outstanding it's a grower it's um it's subtle it moves in it has become one of my favorite fragrances i think this is definitely a top 10 for me which i'm, I'm going to do a top 10 list of fragrances really soon this is definitely going to be in it it's a very sparkling Oh, it's so beautiful. It's almost a gourmand in some ways. I always think of like a blueberry muffin when I smell this, although it's not like a heavy bready scent at all. It's just got this warm berry and vanilla. So you can see how that would go into the gourmand territory. But there's also nutmeg and woods in here. Now it's got that lovely bit of spice. I keep sniffing it because it's so beautiful. Um it's smooth it's creamy but there is a bit of sparkle now the juniper berry which is the the fruit co content in here is obviously the berry that is used to make gin so somehow this berry is giving me both an actual berry scent as well as this kind of slightly boozy quality i don't know if that's that's how it's happening for everybody else i don't know but i get both a slightly boozy and fruity quality in here which is so beautiful the vanilla is not too sweet it's very very smooth um, and it combines with the woods really beautifully it has a lot of similarity to Rose's Vinny from Mansera and Intense Cafe from Montel there is a similarity a little biscuity cakey vanilla but this is done in much more of an elegant way it's much classier than those two it's much more refined i guess than the other two but it's beautiful and like i say i'm wearing scents that make me feel happy at the moment and make me feel just i don't know just good so this is definitely one that does that that is gentle fluidity gold by maison francis cogen so next is another of my ride or dies this is my favorite from the house of ormond jane this is tafe this one is my go-to and i don't care i'm thinking just grab something and go it's clean it's kind of juicy it's warm it's just a lovely rose fragrance it's a lovely tafe rose fragrance um the tafe rose comes off to me very slightly plasticky 
Imagine a plump rose with this slightly plasticky edge on its petal. It's a little bit like that, but it just is beautifully done in here. There's something so clean and fresh about Almond Jane fragrances. They have this class, sophistication, but subtlety. There's much, there's so much subtlety in the blend, I think. And this is really, this really displays that really beautifully. But I find it's the note of dates that bring this lovely, juicy, dark warmth to the rose but it's juicy, it's also very clean. Overall, I would say it was a fresh scent. Even though there is a warmth from amber and this date note, it still is clean and it's unusual. I wanna say it's aromatic, but I don't think there's any herbs in here or anything like that. There's just something, yeah, it's relaxing, it's clean. Like I say, it's easy to wear, it's smooth, it's kind of enveloping, but not, not cloying in any way. Just a beautiful rose, classy, sophisticated, grab and go, beautiful rose fragrance. So that is Tafe by Almond Jane. So next is another rose fragrance and I do find it sits in the same category as Tafe. It's, it reminds me of it an awful lot. So from the House of Penhaligans, this is the coveted Duchess Rose. And I was lucky that I managed to get this on eBay for a really good price actually. This one reminds me of Tafe, but in the sense that it is a, a versatile everyday kind of one that I can wear every day but at the same time it's quite warming and but clean and bright at the same time so unlike Tafe which is dates and orange or I think it's orange and amber this one has mandarin and has woods I would swear there's plum in here because it's it's a plummy rose to me just very clean and very bright very 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 smooth almost velvety like like or the surface of a plum that kind of not velvety but that smooth um what would you want that you know that kind of smooth surface you get on a plum it reminds me of that a little bit in the opening the the mandarin is quite strong it's very much a bright you know mandarin rose it's very very juicy it's really lovely but i think it gets darker as it dries down and the mandarin does stay with it and give it a slightly sunny a sunny essence but overall it gets very mellow and plummy very plummy um and it's so easy to wear it's so smooth i just can't stop reaching for this it's such an easy grab and go the coveted duchess rose from penhaligans and next is another penhaligans the house house of the moment for me um i'm really enjoying what i've got so far of penhaligans and this is the favorite it's so pretty um and actually the fragrance is really really pretty as well it, it's actually it's a floral musk i suppose if i had to categorize it it's actually a floral musk the florals in here i say were predominantly iris and violet i also pick up on quite a bit of ambroxing in here i don't know if it's a listed thing um but there is that that molecule that's very you know um yeah like fizzy a bit salty, very fresh. It does make me think of a fabric softener, very slightly. It's very clean and it gives you that fabric softener kind of smell. But I don't mind that. I'm not a musk person overall. I think this is this is uh, as close as it's going to get to me having a sort of a, quite a musky, fabric softenery kind of a scent. But it's the violet content in here that I think is winning me over. I do pick up a lot, a lot of violet. It's very pretty. It's a very airy, pretty English country garden kind of a scent. Um, I could imagine this being the scent of a soap, you know, and I think Penhaligans do have a lot of sort of soapy, clean fragrances in their line. The house used to be, um, there was a barber, wasn't he? I think Penhaligan, so, and he did a lot of barber shop fragrances. But yeah, and this is just a lovely, lovely addition to that kind of style, and I really enjoy it. Again, it's an easy grab and go, lovely for spring. Is it nice for summer? I think the musk might be overwhelming for me through the summer, but certainly for spring, it's really, really enjoyable, really pretty. Dressed up in this beautiful pink velvet Victorian bow is the favourite. So next is Coffee Break from Replica. Um, this was quite an impulsive little buy. I'd never planned to buy Coffee Break because it's actually a lavender, vanilla and coffee scent. And I find that with um, lavender and vanilla, I tend not to enjoy it. I think of things like Mongolan and Lavandas Trianon. I've never enjoyed those fragrances. It just doesn't work for me. So I didn't have any reason to venture into this one. And I tried it 
and I was really surprised. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be quite sickly and heavy. And it's more like um, an uplifting, airy kind of a scent. It's not heavy. The coffee is more like steam. It's like steamed coffee in the air. The lavender, it just brings this slightly aromatic, clean edge to the steam, if you like. But it's the vanilla, I think, that... that, that kind of wins this one for me there's a lovely dose of vanilla which reminds me a little bit of whispers in the library from the same line which i have and i really enjoy it reminds me of that only it's got that aromatic um herb from the lavender and although it does come off more floral it's, it's a floral it's a herb it's quite clean and airy lovely for out of the shower and also lovely for going to bed either way it's very relaxing the lavender obviously makes it very relaxing it still has this sort of yummy quality from this coffee and vanilla but light and fizzy and steamy and airy so yeah I'm, I just think it's a really enjoyable little fragrance so I picked up this little fella I found myself a bottle of uh, Indult's Manakara and I spoke about this recently on my um, video that I did on rose samples I had a lot of rose related samples and this was one of them Manakara is the fragrance I needed at the right time. Just the right fragrance for the right time, for the right mood, and it is just ticking all the boxes for me. When I got this, I did contact the company and ask them, you know, what, what's going on with the colour, because the, the bottles I've seen produced now and seeing on people's videos is this really pretty pink, light pink with a different lid. I think it's the bottle's been changed quite a few times, but only this year in January, they changed the design again and the colour of the liquid. So it is actually... It's been this orangey amber colour for, well, since it was launched. I think that was 2017. And then they only just decided to change the colour to pink this year. So it is the correct colour. It's just that I've got the older version. Now they've assured me that it is exactly the same formulation. There's no difference in the scent. I have no idea if it's the same, but apparently it absolutely should be. So this is a rose and lychee fragrance that's all the notes i can i can get hold of is rose 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 and lychee it smells more of lychee and also the concept behind the fragrance is more dedicated to the lychee manakara is i believe a town or village in madagascar where they grow lychees and it is apparently the most abundant and beautiful lychees around so this fragrance is obviously based on that um, and it does smell like lychee, but I would say it smells like candied lychee, right? and it's so sugary sweet, real beautiful candied lychee. It's not complex scent, this is very straightforward, there's no hidden depths here. I do you find it maybe just slightly venture into a vanilla territory in the dry down? Not heavy, you just get more of like a, well I find it goes into like a white chocolate sort of style, maybe a had powdery very pink smelling and i've compared this to the pink um shrimps you get in pick a mix that is exactly what it smells like to me pink and sweet and simple i don't find it to be juvenile i don't find it to smell cheap there is a thread of luxury running through it would i have preferred the newer bottle with the pink juice and the yeah <laughs> It was so pretty looking. I actually um, discovered this fragrance from Demi Rowling as she mentioned Manakara on a few of her recent videos. And the bottle just was so pretty. You know, if I enjoy this fragrance enough that I get through the whole bottle, then I guess maybe one day I'll, I'll have the pink one. That is Manakara from Indult. Two fragrances left to show you. First one is called uh, Sonia Real and it's from Menda Terosa and this is part of their talismans line. Sonia Real is a fragrance born from a dream. The perfumer had a dream about being under the ocean and things like sea urchins and just all these beautiful things under the ocean as well as electrified air. That's, that is in the inscription on the website. And this is the fragrance that was born from that dream. I absolutely adore this bottle. It is the most satisfyingly heavy, well-crafted, and kind of quirky bottle I've ever seen, frankly. Um, it's got this beautiful mandala design on this little disc at the front. You've got these little leather straps that go around to the back. And this lid is just everything, isn't it? It's a, a sea urchin. I've always thought it was a lump of ambergris, because when you smell this fragrance, you're very much in mind of ambergris. It's very salty sea-like fragrance but actually that is a sea urchin anyway what this is 
is an amber centric fragrance i'm not into amber fragrances i think they're beautiful but i never vibed with amber this is the only fragrance i've ever owned that is predominantly amber salty beautiful powdery amber ton of notes which i'm not going to be able to remember but what that gives you is this beautiful complex multi-layered expensive smelling amber fragrance it's got this rich animalic quality that kind of meets this salty amber and that is why you, i get this very strong ambergris the bergamot is just this bright awakening in the opening and as that disappears um, or drifts away you're left with the most beautiful um, almost vintage smelling animalic powdery amber i think this probably is more of a summer fragrance but like i say i'm just wearing all my favorites lately i'm wearing everything that makes me feel good that makes me feel something and this very much does that this is um yeah it's a real special one for me so that is sonia real by menda teresa last but not least is a fragrance i've probably worn the most since i've had it this is by all saints and it's sunset riot and i'm going to go ahead and say this is a baccarat rouge 540 inspiration so i did actually do a mini review on this when it was launched um actually i think it was launched in 2018 but i think i did a little review on it in 2019 and i really enjoyed it i shut off the bat i could tell it was a baccarat rouge type of fragrance um it was that spicy salty sweet candy flavor entirely um what i found with this one was that it was um easier to wear it wasn't as heavy it was a bit cleaner a bit crisper and there was more floral in here i'd always int always intended to actually pick up a bottle of this but i never got around to it because you know i had other things that were similar and i didn't really need it my friend scott from the fragrance channel the centurion he's just the sweetest guy please go and check him out when you finish watching this video i'll link his um channel below he mentioned that he had a bottle of sunset riot and he, he never wore it and he's actually nose blind to baccarat rouge which many people seem to be and for whatever reason, I guess the arrangement of notes, the type of fragrance that this is, he's also nose blind to this one. So he had no use for Sunset Riot anymore. So I swooped in there. I'll have it. You twisted my arm. I'll have it. So thank you, Scott. You're too kind. I'm so happy with it. I didn't realise just how much I was going to be wearing this. This is such an easy grab and go. Again, mood lifter. Just enjoyable. Like Again, it's, it's this backer wrap, but it's lighter. It's cleaner. It's crisper. Um, it sort of dances on the skin. I think there's orange blossom in here as well. I don't remember all the notes, but I definitely get an orange, an orangey hue, an orangey vibe. It could be orange blossom or it could be actually orange. I'm not sure. £59 for the 100ml. And you can definitely find these on various discount sites as well. So definitely worth the money. And it has that lovely beating heart of Baccarat Rouge. But it's elevated and crisp and clean with the florals. So thanks again, Scott. And that is the last of the roundup of fragrances that I've been enjoying. That concludes the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. This is pretty much how I've been smelling throughout May. Um, not bad. Quite <laughs> quite a selection quite a varied selection but it's made me happy i've been picking from the ones that i have been really enjoying and i don't care whether they're suitable for spring or summer or autumn or whatever it doesn't matter wear what makes you feel happy so i'm gonna leave you there thanks for watching guys take care over and out